So I've just quickly paused today's video, actually halfway through, but you're gonna be watching this right at the beginning. I, we just wanted to mention, guys, in the comments section, we try to answer all of the comments in the comments section, of course, and we do read through them all and like them all. But just over the last couple of months, we're getting quite inundated and we mean this in the nicest possible way and we really do appreciate it. People, I think, don't, don't realise that we do read all the comments and in particular, so the little Fiestas video where we just did two together, in the, when, once that video went out, I was actually inundated with inboxes on Instagram with people just saying stuff like, you know, I've got one of them and they're not very good, are they? Guys, you need to put the comments for the videos actually on the videos themselves because I don't get to read all of those comments on Instagram and I feel like I'm not responding to you. And as you do know, we don't actually open private messages unless they've got a contact number in them anyway. So that was a little bit for that and hopefully all of you do leave your comments on the videos themselves. Let's carry on with the video. Straight back on the Audi A1. We got it on the ramp and we left it in the last video where we was actually waiting for a couple of little parts to arrive. We seem to have, most of those parts are now in. We're just waiting on the fan housing, but that's due in today. And then we can get the radiators all fitted into the front panel and actually start getting that back together. So the plan is I'm going to go and drop the wheels off because they look awful and we're going to get them refurbed. We'll hopefully get them back in this video as well. As you can see, the battery tray's arrived. Chris has chucked that in. He's put a battery in there and started. He has actually wired everything up. And the reason he's done all that is because we have never, ever heard this car run. If you remember in the first video, we did hotwire the starter motor just to spin it over and make sure that it sounded okay and had plenty of compression because this car come with no key. Today is the day. It's actually one of our subscribers messaged me on Instagram quite a while ago and said, if you ever need any keys, Rob, give us a shout. I'd happily come and do them. And he's actually on his way today to do a key for this. So fingers crossed, even in this video, we're actually going to hear this car run for the first time and we're all going to hear it together. So I'm going to go and get them wheels dropped off. Actually, I've just about got enough time. Go and get them dropped off and get him here, do the lock, do the ignition, and then we'll um, pick up as and when. We've dropped them off. This is before. Let's see what they look like when we pick them right, up. So locksmith has arrived. He doesn't want to be on camera. So Premier Auto Locksmiths, he covers all around the M25, like basically London and the surrounding areas. But I just said to Chris, man after your own art here. Look how tidy his van is. This little machine, what's it called? Uh, Condor Mini. And it's basically, he's put our blade in there because we already had a blade. And this has just copied that blade. Yeah, exactly. And then this is our nice new key. And you're going to copy it straight on to that. Yeah, and then program it. Is it all right if I film when that goes back in yeah, there? Yeah, I actually yeah, film fine. it doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. No worries. We'll do that. This is our new key. <laughs> So what it does, it probes it first to know what position the key's in. Yeah. And then once it probes it, it detects at what position the key's on, so it can cut it just like bang on. on yeah. yeah. Because that's obviously CNC cut now. That's quick, isn't it? So it will go over it, I think, twice, and then you flip it around and then you cut the other side. Definitely a clever bit of kit. Second time, basically, it just goes deeper. Yeah, basically, because it's less stress on the drill. Then. Yeah, that's right. It takes yeah. more time on it. That it's makes sense. Yeah. So obviously, if he cuts it one time, it's too much pressure on the drill. Bit. Yeah. So it just takes it off. Very impressive. Impressive for such a little machine yeah. as well yeah. in the back of a van. Exactly. Brilliant. The blade is cut and the ignition's now on 
and this is where the magic happens. You've got a key reader down there on the floor. Yeah. You've got some code, just basically, you've got some codes that you've been sent. Mm -hmm. You need to put them into the laptop mm -hmm. and extract that data exactly. from the car. Yeah. And then... And then we send it over to a third party, which then supplies us with the car's immobilizer data. And you put the key in that and reader. And we put the key in the reader. We generate a dealer key. Um, and then we learn the key into the car. And then that's it. So we're done. Yeah, it should all be starting after that. Brilliant. We'll see how we get on. I can't wait to hear it run. Yeah. If it does. <laughs> we, we can't give you all the inside information, guys, but he's just said that we can show a little bit of it. So we've got the demo data. And we're just going to prepare a normal Audi dealer key. Yes. Oh, I need to take this one out. Put it into the coil. Email data prepare key. Press OK. So it's an Audi. We're going to prepare a normal dealer key. Yes. It's time to make key. So now this key is now locked to this car. It's got the immobilizer data of this vehicle. So now we're going to learn the key to the car. So just flip it open, put the key in, turn it on, press yes. So we're going to load the IMO data. We want to learn one key to the car. Yeah. So you press yes. It asks if the key is keyless. It's not a keyless key, so you press no. So if you look here, it's 1-1 one one now. Yeah, let me zoom in. It's going to go in a few seconds. Yeah, I can see So that. that means that now one key out of one has been learned to the vehicle. Right. So if I press OK now, after a few seconds, it might not disappear until you turn the ignition off and on, but that indicates that the key is now programmed to the car now. Right. So if we turn it off now, put it in, and it says here, all keys successfully learned also. So now, you want me to give it a go? Yeah, just uh, see if it cranks. Yeah, just see yeah. if it cranks. Briefly. Yeah, that's good enough. That's, that's good, good enough, enough for us. Yeah. Yeah. And the remote is it's working. Oh, well done, mate. Yeah, no Guys, worries. I'm going to put his link in the description down below. Very, very reasonably priced. And, of course, covers all of the southeast sort of area around the M25 of London. Where are you actually based in London? We're based in Hackney in London. Hackney, and you do pretty much all around London. Yeah, exactly. You do airports anywhere. Exactly. Yeah, so anywhere. I'll put his link in the description, guys. The locksmith yeah, has just left. And what a lovely fella, Chris. Yeah. Very young, very hungry, really, really knew his stuff. And Chris got a spare key done for his E350 convertible while he was here. And, of course, he really looked after us. So I am going to put his link in the description, like I said. Now, he turned the key over, and we're... That went to start, didn't it, Chris? It, it, almost did. it almost did. So this, you're hearing it for the first time. We're going to hear it for the first time. Chris is briefly going to run it up and ready when you are, mate. And the window's open now. Got a noisy bell. Swiss watch. Oh, it's this. Look. Stop. Little vacuum pump there. That sounds beautiful. That's, uh, mate, that's really made me happy, that has. Good news, that. Oil level sensor system. Please refill washer fluid. I ain't got a bottle yet. All the airbag lights. Yeah, we've got them all on. Yeah. Yeah, you on, can mate. turn that off, mate. And that key, I'll shut this door, do a demo. All locks and unlocks the car. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a genuine Audi key, he said, that one. Yeah, boots open. Perfect, mate. What's next? Get over and get the wheels. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll get over there now, pick the wheels up. Hopefully, they're all done. A couple of bits to come in the post, yeah, I said that earlier. The uh, cowling's meant to be here today, but we'll see how we get on. That's more like it. What a difference. They're absolutely perfect. Just got back with them. Unfortunately, one of them did have a big hole in the side of it, so we have had to have a brand new tyre put on. And they're not cheap, are they, 16-inch? But we've got them now. We're going to chuck them on. And hopefully, if that cowling comes in, we'll be driving this car off of the ramp today, which is going to be a massive, massive milestone for us, isn't it? Yes. Because yes. that was it's in a... around a long time. That has hung around a long time, but it was pretty badly hurt as well. So let's get those wheels fitted. It got quite late last night, so this is actually the next day. But it has planned out okay because... The air con pipe has turned up and we only actually ordered this a couple of days ago when we realised our one was no good. 
And we ordered that from Midland Car Breakers and he sent it on an overnight for us. So huge shout out to them guys and their numbers there if you need to give them a call. They also sent it in this huge box so it didn't get bent up or curled over. Also, you've already been the packaging for this, Chris. Yep. The Radcal's turned up. Chris has built this up. You must have done this last night, did you? So that is all ready to actually now bolt. Well, actually, I've got to pop around and pick up the yeah, we're on that. coolant temperature sensor. And then this can actually be bolted in, can't it? Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video. We did actually go with a brand new radiator. And we actually got that quite cheap in the end as well. So really moving forward with it. We're actually going to go get straight on with it. Get that air pipe fitted. Because there is a bit of fiddling around to get that right down the back there. And then we can chuck the wheels on and get the rest of it back together. at the difference in that little car with those wheels on it. It's just made so so much of a difference having them done back silver again. It just looks so fresh. Chris is actually busy on the bench. We got him back and he said, have you still got one of the chrome bits there that are dirty? You haven't, have you? No, I've been over them. Well, you can kind of see. Yeah. You can see how poor point, that is. Residue, and it? these are the ones that he's he's cleaned up just wanted them to look absolutely perfect and like new so you would have also seen on that bit of time lapse he's got the aircon pipe located fitted the gearbox is now full chris yep. the new reverse switch is in there as you can see and our new temperature switch has just turned up as well we had to go dealer on that part and believe it or not i'm going to say it now that little switch i will just get it out was actually £55.40 with a VAT. So crazy amount of money for that switch, but we couldn't get it off the market anywhere. Also, you would have seen Chris messing around in here when on that bit of time lapse. We don't know what side, but we've got a bent hub or a bent strut. This wheel is slightly tipped in at the top, which is kind of normal on some cars. And as you can see, this one is slightly tipped out. And this gap in here, I can actually get my hand right in there. And on this side, I actually can only just about get my fingers in there. So we're not quite sure what side it is yet. I'm going to have to go down the yard at some point and figure that out. But a lot of a lot of the stuff is back on there now. Edda tank's back on, all plumbed up. Air box is all back on there correctly how it should be. I only put it on temporary the other day. And of course, all of those air con pipes. So once you've done that, Chris, we're going to move on to... Another pipe there that's buggered. Oh, is there? Yeah. Is it air or...? It. No, it's coolant. Oh, is it? I've put a temporary one on so we can plumb it up. But yeah, you can just see under there. I can see that little crack in it. Fractured. Yeah. But this is... With salvage, this is what you get all the time. Little little bits and pieces like this. You don't realise until it's till it comes to actually putting it together. So we've got the front panel there, got the rad pack, all the fans fitted on, that's all done. We've literally got to screw that sensor into it there. And then this can all go into the front panel and we can start the assembly of the front end. But so far, so good. And so glad we got those wheels done silver. So Chris has got all of that together. Everything's fitted. Everything's exactly where it should be. But he hasn't actually done up the mounts on it. And the only reason he didn't do those both up, he said it's so tight, that top radiator hose, he wants to leave it so that once the front panel's in, we can kind of just leave it a ra lean the radiators back, plumb that up, and then insert it. And of course, you can do the bolts up from the front. So we're just going to go for it now and Get, get this a test fit, make sure it's all okay, and then we can start plumbing it up. This is, like I said earlier, a huge, huge mild, milestone for this car because ultimately, if this all goes okay, we can drive this one off the ramp.
it's never a salvage rebuild without a few trips to Kent Auto Salvage Cars, is it? I'm back down here again. Our water bottle, I've just chucked back here, has actually got a crack in it. But this is, I don't even know what this is. Mark 5 Golf. It's exactly the same, so I've grabbed it off of that. Washer bottle extension there as well. Possibly going to fit. And I'm also looking for a couple of wing brackets and a blade. We thought that this come in our parts, but obviously it didn't. Worst way we can order them from Silver Lake, but for now I'd like to try and get a couple here so that we can get the wings properly bolted on. And of course, a couple of horns as well. Finally, got the header tank on there. Got some water in it. Again, we've mentioned this previously. We are only running it on neat water. There's no point putting expensive antifreeze in it and then it all ends up all over the floor just like it did earlier when we first filled it up. So I've got it running, we're gonna run it up to temperature. It sounds perfect, this little car. And do you know, it wasn't until, I don't, I think we bought this car blind with no mileage or anything, didn't we? We did. But did we find out the mileage last time? Well, we did, didn't we? Yeah. It's only done 33,946 miles, this one. Temperature's getting up there. Fuel, where are we looking? Good on fuel. Over half a tank. Over half a tank of fuel. We've got airbag light on, which for obvious reasons. We've got an engine management light yeah. on, and we don't know what that is. But what we actually probably will do, because we've had everything unplugged and we've tried to run, we tried to spin in the starter over, we're just going to let it get up to temperature and wait for the fan to cut in. Make sure all that side of it is okay before we actually button that front panel right up, because we haven't yeah. tightened the cross the crash bar we haven't tightened oh you have so a few little bits left to do but we'd really like to hear that fan cutting and i don't think it's going to take very long in this heat Are you chris has he oh. got that was the other thing as well i said that other hour he had sat nav and people said rob don't take the screen for granted they haven't all got it it's not been enabled not been enabled so this one hasn't actually got sat nav it's probably quite straightforward to put it in a lot of these audi radios have um, VAG radios, have the little memory cards you can yeah, put in. Yeah, that has SD1, SD2, SD2 so yeah. it's probably available. So we'll wait for it to get up to temperature, wait for that fan to cut in. As soon as that's cut in, we'll be happy, check for leaks and continue on with it. This is brilliant. We thought we'd seen it all before, but out of that whole 100% check, it's just done a health report on the car. It's got one green tick out of the whole lot. There's power steering fault, passenger door electrics, driver's door electrics, anti-theft, data bus, instrument cluster. We've got airbags, 10 faults. Engine electronics, 13 faults. So we are, as usual, going to do the usual. And we're actually going to do clear all. We know that the airbag ones are going to come back. And we know that there's going to be other elements that are going to come back as well. But... We, we would like to think the majority of them are due to the battery's been, because the battery was actually snapped in half in this car, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And there was a lot of broken wires, a lot of damage, a lot of, yeah, just wrecked. So we'll see how many of those come back. It's actually going quite slow now, isn't it? Can you hear that little electric water pump? I can, yeah. Pumping the water around the system. I bet if I cut this, it'd go really quick. Let's cut there for a minute. Guys, it always happens, literally a couple of minutes there. So, airbags, four faults. I'm not even gonna try and clear that. Instrument cluster, one fault. Now, power steering, this is the first A1 we've done on the channel, but this is not the first A1 that I've done. And these are notorious for the power steering, actually, they pack up and it has to be plugged into a proper VAG computer to have this reset crash shut off was triggered yeah do you remember me mentioning yeah, yeah, this yeah. to you yeah. and they are a pain so we get that sorted anyway so we're quite happy with that we, we got the power steering got the airbag faults and that is about it yeah i wonder what the cluster one is let's have a quick look shall we read dtc's oh um instrument cluster that's probably to do with that new key right possibly oil level 
thermal sensor signal to long high. So that is going to be, you know the oil level of thermal sensor, would that be the one that was underneath in the bottom of the sump or do you think it's one higher up? I don't know, to be honest, Rob. Again, sometimes me and Chris actually have to get that code and go straight into Google with it because yeah. it just elaborates a little bit more on what it yeah. is, doesn't it? But we're going to run it up again now. Everything's it's plugged in. Yeah, do you want to... The only thing not plugged in is gearbox, uh, is the reverse switch we need the plug for it we do don't we yeah one had one broken wire didn't it and it was broke yes, yeah. too far back yeah. if you turn that ignition off now and then back on and then start it again we'll see if the engine light went out come up oil level sensor full but the, the light engine management light's gone out try the steering i know it's not gonna yeah no, it's still rock it's got the old the steering symbol up there yeah oil leather sensor system fault, fault. So it wants a new oil level, level sensor by the sounds of it. Quite possible. But overall... We better check the wire into that, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. any damage. Have we tried it in gear? Is it worth trying it? Yeah, well, you can see, guys, they haven't been turned yet. Yeah, let's check the other side. They're both spinning, mate. What's that, second? Third? Yeah. Yeah. All there. Is this five or six speeds? Only a little one litre. Yeah, fine. Yeah. All seems fine then, mate. And sounds. Sounds are lovely. No water leaks at all, no. Sounds a lovely little car. Stop there, just to see how long ago we bought this car. And it was, <laughs> it's embarrassing really, isn't it? December 21. So uh, we've actually had this one six months. And for the first time ever, we're actually going to pull it outside under its own steam. Well, hopefully. Checking the brakes. That bit of water there was from earlier on, obviously. Let's just clean that lens, guys, sorry. There's a bit of a blur on there. What are you going to do? Have a quick run up the yard and back? There's nothing out there we've got to hide, is there? No. So nice to see this car driving. It really, really is. And we've discovered it's actually this wheel. You can see it here now. Look how much it's laying in at the top. It's definitely that one. Our brakes are a bit rusty. Guys, we are three quarters of the way for a video on this, so don't panic, it's coming very, very soon. Possibly even on Monday. Bit of air in the system, because there is a bit of water going, leaving out of it. I've just got Chris to stop there, and you can see there's water there. so nice to see that car driving honestly it just feels so much so good yeah there's a little bit of um, rust on the back brakes but the front ones are new obviously aren't they so they should be fine Hundred percent this wheel, definitely. Take me for a spin round the block. Oh, them eaters are nice or not? Yeah. We need that in this weather. Yeah, show me about the IC. Yeah, that's not going to work just yet. Not yet. Yeah, mate, you can't complain of that, can you? No. So nice to have it finally driving. Pretty happy day there for me and Chris. And I'll be honest, I was, we was just saying, we was wandering around the yard locking up and uh, we, we both agreed that's quite a lot of projects. We have 
stuck to our word and cracked on there, didn't we? That's the Audi A1, all running and driving, and I'm, I know I've said it so many times in this video, but I could not be happier about that, and I know Chris would be quite happy about it as well. The Land Rover Defender that I ended up buying is, I mean, we sold that in an Instagram post, but that was picked up today, that's gone, and just everything seems to be flowing really, really yeah. good, doesn't it? Yeah. With these salvage cars, there is always, and I'm not going to say you get away with it every now and then. You don't. Every time you buy one, there's always a little bit at the end of it what you have to end up having to run out and get. So that water bottle put us back about 30 minutes today because I had to run out and get one. But it's all done now, all running and driving. And that's it's not going to leave the workshop just yet because there's a little bit of body work on it. And we'd really like to get it, you'd like to get it, ready for the paint shop, wouldn't you? Yeah. And of course, I've got a source of new leg, etc. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle on any longer in this video. As usual, we do hope that you did enjoy it. And hopefully, everybody watched that little bit in the beginning. If you've got any comments or, or your thoughts or questions, drop them in the comment section on the video. And of course, I will always get back to you as long as I can. Sometimes we get a few too many and I really can't start up any later. But don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.